You guys know we're not going to get a new piece of gear around here and not at least tell you a little bit about it. I recently got my ID51A, and uh, you've probably seen it on a couple of the previous segments that I've done. It's uh, kind of become my go-to radio for everything. I've got quite a collection of handy talkies. Being on the go a lot, they kind of fit my lifestyle. I've got uh, so, you know several of them. Three of them are D-Star capable. So I've got the ID31, the ID51, and the IC92. Let's take a look at the ID51 in a little more detail. It's a little bit different than the ID31. On the ID31, the power button's on the front. This one has a dedicated button on the side here, a little round one. So we'll hit that, and let's start her up. Um, I've already gone in and set this one up with my call sign. So when you get your radio, you'll have to go in and customize it for yourself and put your call sign in there and everything. This radio has so many features, it's going to be almost impossible to cover every single one of them in the amount of time we have. But let's take a look at the most used ones, and that should get you well on your way to using it. So let's first of all, let's take a look at the display. Right now, we've got two bands showing. I remember me telling you this is a dual watch radio, so we can hear my UHF simplex frequency, and we can also hear the Brandon D-Star repeater, which are the ones that I have programmed at the moment, or actually selected at the moment. On the screen, we've got the battery indicator, we've got the GPS indicator, I've got the SD card indicator because there's a micro SD card in here, we've got the current time, as well as the memory channel. The primary band is the one that's larger, so if we tap this main button right here, it's going to toggle us between this one and the sub band here. So now, now the bottom one is the one that's the primary one and the UHF simplex is the sub. When we hit the push to talk, the primary one is the one that's going to go out on the air. For this demonstration, let's go into single band mode and it'll make the display larger and a little bit easier for you to see. To do that, we'll just hold down this, this main button right here and you'll see it changes to the, whatever one was the primary. So right now it's got my UHF simplex. In, in addition to the things that were on the screen, when we're in this mode, we've got the date and the day of the week at the bottom of the screen as well. And we're, we're on channel 001. To change channels, there's a knob on the top of the radio and we'll just rotate it and it'll scan through the channels that I have programmed into the radio. I use the ICOM software to program mine. It comes with the radio and it seems to work pretty well. Up here at the top of the screen, we've got mode this one is uh, the 345 repeater. Uh, there's the frequency, and it's an FM mode. It's not a D-Star repeater. But you can actually just program a D-Star repeater straight in here. On the side, we've got a VFO button, and we've got the memory button, or call channel button. So if we go into VFO mode, it's just like any other. So we can change the frequencies, go about our business, and manually put everything we want into here. We can go back here and hit the memory button on the side and put this back into memory mode, which is the one I like to operate in. We've got a quick button on the bottom. And if we hit it, it gives us a bank select, duplex, digital squelch, tone select, skip, DTMF transmit, voice transmit, brings up GPS information, a lot of cool stuff in there. Position, priority, uh, weather alerts, band scope, audio recorder. Man, this thing's got so many features in it. But uh, it's a great menu. It's got a lot of good stuff and, and it's a quick way to get to the things that you use most often. To get out of it, you can hit it again or you can hit the left side of the rocker switch here. Speaking of the rocker switch, this thing is probably your most used tool on here. It's got this uh, thing in the middle. It looks like a joystick, but it's actually more akin to an inner button. So let's talk about uh, DR mode. Let's go bring up the repeater list and find the one that's closest to us. So we'll go down, we we'll use the rocker switch and we'll go down here to from, which is always the repeater that you're transmitting or going out from. So let's hit the blue button. It brings up the menu. We've got repeater list, near repeater, and the transmit history. So we can look at any that we used recently. So we're gonna do near repeater here find the one that's closest to us. So it's using the GPS coordinates from the GPS built in and matching up the lists that are in the radio that, that are updatable and it'll bring up the repeaters that are closest by. So we've got two in Brandon, we've got uh, module B, 
module C, which is a UHF and VHF. So let's go back to one. Uh, we'll just pick uh, Brandon, and I'll pick uh, the B, the UHF repeater. We hit the little blue button, it selects it, and it shows us our information that we're on right here. K5RKN uh, module B. And we, up at the top, we've still got use repeater. So if we hit the push to talk, we're going to actually go out to the repeater now. If you want to use this to link up to a reflector or whatever, then you can make sure you're on the two, which is what we're trying to go to. And we're going to go hit two and hit the blue button. It's going to bring up a list. And you've got a lot of stuff in here. Your most common used one is going to be the your call sign list. So let's go in there. And you can see we've got use repeater. The commands appear down at the bottom, CQ, 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 which is what we're going to use to talk. But you can unleak a repeater. It's got a U command. We've got repeater status, which sends an I. We've got an echo test, which sends an E. We've got link to reflector 1A. For a quick way to get down through here, you can hold down the rocker switch and go, or you can also use this knob and scroll down through. So if we want to link to one Charlie, we just go right here, hit the blue button, puts the command up here, link to reflector one Charlie, and it displays the command that's going to send. If we hit enter, we're going to link the Brandon repeater to the reflector. You can see I've got my DVAP running back here and it's connected. We can use the same methodology and use my DVAP to connect the same way we do the repeater. Let's go back down to the bottom here. We'll hit the blue button. We'll go to repeater list this time, and we'll find simplex, which is group 20. And uh, it comes from ICOM with a simplex group in there. So you'll have to make sure your simplex channel is in there or your DVAP channel. Let's go into simplex, and you can see I've got DVAP at the top. We'll hit it again. We've still got the link to one Charlie command in the top, and we'll hit the button. And we're linked to one Charlie. To unlink it, we'll basically do the same thing. We'll go up here to two. We'll hit the blue button. We'll go to your call sign. And we'll go up and find that unlink command that we found, unlink repeater. And we're ready. So let's find an opening. A remote system unlinked, so we're unlinked from it. Just like you would do any repeater. When you're in this mode, any messages that come from the system over the air will be displayed here on the bottom. Let's look at some of the other functions here. We've got some other buttons over here. We've got a mode slash scan button, and we're back in VFO mode. If you want to talk to someone on digital voice, maybe in simplex or something, just tap that, and it'll change you to FM narrow. Tap it again, and we're in DV. Tap it again, back to regular FM. If you hold that button down, it brings up a scan mode, and it'll tell you, ask you which ones you want to scan. All, band, the, uh, the hand bands, frequency range. So we'll just say all. Hit the little blue selector again. That's your magic button to everything. And you'll see it start scanning. So you can locate other things to listen to or whatever when you're away. When you're in VFO mode, You've got another button over here that'll allow you to change the channel in different increments. So right now we're changing down here in the kilohertz. If you tap that button one time, you can change in the megahertz. If you change it again, you can go one more digit up into the tens of megahertz. One of the things people say about the radio is there's no DTMF pad. And sure enough, it's not. But it hasn't really been a problem for me. ICOM's given us a way to go into the menu settings here hit menu there's DTMF right there Let's turn that down and we've got DTMF memories you can go into there and fill out what you want to send so I've got uh, D01 and D99 and pick the one you want to use let's say oh, I just want to use D01 hit the blue selector and that's the one that's active we'll go back to menu let's go back into the hand band so I'm just going to pick uh, this M button, which just brings me back into memory channels, and I'm going to use my UHF channel that I've got. 
So how do we send those DTMF commands? On the side of the radio, right above the power button, is the squelch button. If you hold that button down, it'll, it'll open the squelch and you can hear the noise. But you can also hold the push to talk. Let's ID so we'll be legal in 5Z and O. And let's tap that squelch button. And it sends the DTMF commands for you. That button's pretty important also. You can use it to adjust the squelch. So if you hold that button down and turn the knob at the top, you can see the squelch levels here. On the other side of the radio, we've got a few things as well. We've got a place for the speaker mic. We've got the charging jack right here and a data jack in case you want to do something like DRATS with it. Speaking of the, uh, the charging jack, this radio charges in about three hours. One thing about the memory button here is if you toggle it, you'll hit your call channels, toggle it again, and you're going to hit the weather channels. Uh, this one's on Weather 02, and if you scroll through them, you can find the NOAA weather radio frequency that's for your area. Let's go into the menus of the radio. Hit the menu button over here. There's so many features on this thing, there's no way we're going to go through all of them. So let's just kind of run down through it and give you a quick overview. We've got the duplex and tone um, menu. You can, incidentally, you can scroll through these with the knob and you go into them by hitting the blue button in the center of the rocker switch right here. But you can also control it with the rocker switch. Duplex and tone is the first one. If we go in there, you can see those are the things that you're used to. You can set your transmit, receive, offset, repeater, tones, tone, tone squelch, all that stuff is set in here. To get back out of the menu, we hit the left side of this rocker switch and it takes us up one level, just like always. Let's go down, we've got the scan menu. We can go in and customize our scan settings, uh, scan speeds and different things like that. We can record voice memos, QSO recorder, voice recorder. I love this QSO recorder. You can go in and record things and uh, and play them back. So a lot of times I'll record a net and, and play it back at work just for something to listen to, things like that. You can also get to that through the quick menu, which is what I'm mostly accustomed to. Voice transmit, you can uh, record, record your voice and set how to transmit it, uh, how often for it to send it, things like that. I haven't really used that. Um, I think some people use it, but it, I, I haven't. And here's one of my favorite features also, broadcast radio. If you go into that, you can uh, set mem radio memories, turn it on and off. Go down to the third item, broadcast radio on, hit the button, it actually turns it on. And to turn it back off, we go back into the menu and hit the same item. GPS, this sets our options. Uh, GPS mode, GPS set, this, um, oh, there's, there's so many things in here. Um, GPS log, you can actually have it log your, your trail if you leave your GPS on and it will actually store it on the SD card and you can bring it up in Google Earth and see your track. It's uh, pretty cool stuff. So if we go into GPS mode, this is where we set GPSA so, so your GPS information will show up on like APRS.FI. So, uh, assuming your repeater supports it, that is. You can go to your receive history here. Let's go in there and you can scroll down through the stations that you've heard on D-Star. If they had GPS turned on, you can go in by hitting the little blue button and see their location, things like that, how far they are from you. DV memory, your call sign, my station. This is where you actually set your call sign. This is me in 5ZNO slash ID51. And then there's one without it. I was just playing around with the demo, but I always send, like to send what I'm talking on. You can also do your transmit message in here. So I also send uh, Tommy in Mississippi when I'm using this. So DV set, this is set all your DV options. Speech, this is a really cool option on the radio too. I, I use this a lot, I leave it turned on. If someone conjuncts the repeater, it automatically sends you their call sign right at the bottom of the screen. And the little lady in the box here will actually read it to you. DTMF, we went into that a little earlier. QSO log, you can log your contacts. Uh, I, I don't really leave that turned on, but it's a cool option. Function, this goes in and sets the different functions on the radio. Uh, set your power save mode. Um, 
things like that, uh, monitor options, key locks, mic gain, internal and external mic, so they're treated differently. If we go down to display, we can set the backlight, which I did actually did that earlier and turned the backlight to stay on so I could show you guys. It's just tons and tons of things in here. Time set, SD card information. This is good stuff right here. Um, go into that we can actually save our settings to a new file so let's do that and we'll save it save file yes what we're doing is dumping the content so this whole file to the SD card that's in here the SD card is actually over here on the side of the radio underneath that power button if you pull this back you can pull a little SD card out put it in your computer and read the files that we just saved and load them into the ICOM software, customize your radio, enhance the repeater list, uh, duplicate the file if you want custom file with repeaters for Canada only and US only or, or whatever you want to do with it. You can make all those modifications in the software, write it back to the card in the settings folder and the radio will see it. So then you can go into load settings and you'll see the files that are on there. You can see this TM one. Uh, obviously, that's my initials. And it's got the customized settings that I put in there. So if I hit the blue button, it's going to load those settings into this radio. And I'll be all custom for whatever I add. One of the things about that is there's a certain amount of, there's only X number of memory channels in the radio, but the D Star system is growing. Uh, what seems to be a, a really rapid rate here lately. There's so many repeaters now that everyone in the world won't fit into the radio. What you can do is, is have them for regions or whatever like I was talking about. And you can use the methodology and customize it and, and have groups of whatever you want to do. Then we've got this others menu. Let's go in there and look. We've got the information which gives you the voltage and the version. And that's how much battery I've got left. And they're the versions for the firmware for my, my radio that I have loaded. I hope you found it interesting about the ID51. It's a great radio, man. I love this thing. I carry it with me literally all the time. Um, it goes with me to work. It goes with me when I go out of town. It's nice and small and light. Just really great all-around radio. Pretty much all the features that I wanted.